Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. The International Governmental Committee for Non-Materialistical Cultural Heritage of UNESCO enlists Hamasia Rasfa Art within the list of non-materialistical cultural heritage. The Sultanate marks World Day for the Disabled while focusing on technology of benefit to integrate the disabled in the society. And President Putin vows Turkey's leadership would be made to regret the downing of the Russian warplane as Moscow announces a halting talks on a major gas pipeline project. Those were the headlines. Now for the news in detail. The International Governmental Committee for Non-Materialistical Cultural Heritage of UNESCO announced that it agreed to enlist Hamasia Rasfa Art and Cultural Spaces for Majlis and Arabian Coffee within the list of non-materialistical cultural heritage as three elements that the Sultanate shares with the number of countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council. The announcement of enlisting them took place during the meetings of the 10th round of the committee, which are being held with the Sultanate's participation in Namibia. Syed Said bin Sultan Al Busaidi, Assistant and Director General for Literature and Arts at the Ministry of Heritage and Culture, who is participating in the meetings, said cultural spaces for Majlis and Arabian coffee are two joint files the Sultanate presented along with Qatar, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. It highlighted customs and traditions related to majlis and coffee and what they represent to the Gulf societies. Regarding Hamasia Rasfa Art, it's a joint file presented by the Sultanate and the United Arab Emirates. With the aim of encouraging the disabled to integrate in the society and to strengthen the environmental support for them, the Sultanate marked the World Day for the Disabled, which came this year to focus on technology and mechanisms to integrate the disabled in the society. On this occasion, the Ministry of Education organized a number of forums and activities that targeted the disabled, male and female students, in addition to segments of the society. On its part, the Ministry of Social Development exerted great efforts to care and rehabilitate the disabled. It also provided facilities for them to integrate in the society and labor market. With the participation of 120 Girl Scouts from 40 countries, the activities of the Girl Scouts and Guides Experience Forum were concluded. It was organized in cooperation with the World Association of Girl Scouts and Guides. The ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Saud bin Salem Al Balushi, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Education for Education Planning and Development of Human Resources. The five-day forum focused on the Sultanate's experiences in the field of developing skills and capabilities of Scouts movement. A booth was organized to showcase the Girl Scout skills and guide arts. Omani Girl Scouts presented their experiences in the field of integrating the disabled into the Scouts movement. By hosting this forum, the Sultanate emphasizes on the success of Omani Girl Scouts on the Gulf and Arab level. <coughs> The Omani Women Association in the Wilaya of Sohar in the Governorate of North Batina held a ceremony to celebrate the 45th Glorious National Day. It witnessed a huge participation from members of the society, including men, women and children. It included an exhibition that focused on women products such as handicrafts, clothes as well as traditional food. It also included various activities, namely traditional dances, accompanied by Omani singing arts and national poems on the love of the leader and the country, in addition to artistic shows performed by children. The ceremony also witnessed a fashion show with Omani dresses. During the ceremony, the participants expressed their love and loyalty to the leader of the country, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, praying to Almighty Allah to protect His Majesty as the guardian of this country and its people. <clears throat> 
The Sultanate's embassies in brotherly and friendly countries continued the celebrations on the occasion of the 45th Glorious National Day. The Sultanate's embassy in Mauritania held a reception ceremony to mark the 45th Glorious National Day and it was attended by a number of senior officials and personalities in addition to members of the diplomatic corps as well as businessmen, media men and intellectuals. Attendees praised good relations with that linked their country with the Sultanate, which were cemented by the wise policy of His Majesty the Sultan. The ceremony included various activities, presentations and documentaries that highlight this glorious occasion, in addition of stressing on the achievements of the blessed Omani Renaissance. Still to come in our news bulletin, Limiting warming to 2 degrees or even less is the number one priority of the Paris Climate Conference. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. Russia's President Vladimir Putin called today for a broad international front against terrorism. Speaking in his State of the Nation address, televised live, Putin called for an end to what he called double standards that hampered uniting global efforts in fighting terrorism. Putin specifically targeted Turkey, accusing it of allowing terrorists to earn money by selling oil stolen from Syria. He denounced Turkey's downing of a Russian jet at the border with Syria as a treacherous war crime. Putin also vowed Turkey's leadership would be made to regret the downing of the Russian warplane as Moscow announced a halt in talks on a major gas pipeline project. Following a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was due to hold talks later today with his Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu, marking the two countries' first high-level face-to-face talks since Ankara's downing of the Russian plane on November the 24th. Turkey's Foreign Ministry says the Turkish and Russian Foreign Ministers will meet on the sidelines of an Organization for Security and Cooperation meeting in the Serbian capital, Belgrade. Turkish Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu dismissed Russian allegations that Turkey was buying oil from Daesh and said that NATO member was doing all it could to secure its border with Syria. He added that Russian operations in Syria are halting efforts of ejecting Daesh militants from Turkish border and his country is exerting its utmost efforts to control its border with Syria and it will build a barrier to minimize movement of militants between the two countries. Members of the British public expressed mixed opinions today after their parliament voted yesterday to bomb Daesh militants in Syria. British bombers made their first strikes against the militant group this morning, hitting oil fields that Prime Minister David Cameron said were being used to fund attacks on the West. Tornado bombers took off from the RAF Akrotiri Air Base in Cyprus just hours after British lawmakers voted 397 to 223 to support Cameron's plan for airstrikes. They returned to base safely several hours later. As MPs debated the issue last evening, hundreds of people staged a protest and die in outside the parliament building. The parliament vote was a blow to the leader of Britain's main opposition Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, who was against launching airstrikes. 
The home of a Palestinian prisoner whom Israel accuses of masterminding an attack in the West Bank was demolished today. Israeli troops and bomb demolition experts wired up the prisoner's home and used explosives to detonate it after evacuating family members who live in the house. Israel accuses the men of heading the cell of militants that carried out the the attack that resulted in the killing of an Israeli settler couple in the West Bank on October the 1st. He was arrested two days after the attack and sits in an Israeli prison. The Israeli couple was shot dead while driving through the occupied West Bank by suspected Palestinian attackers. The couple's four children, aged between four months and nine years old, were also in the car but were physically unharmed when the gunmen opened fire near the Jewish settlement of Itamar. Authorities were trying to learn why a couple carried out a shooting rampage that left 14 people dead and seriously wounded more than a dozen others in neighboring San Bernardino in California. The shooting occurred on a holiday banquet at a social services center for people with disabilities. The pair were killed in a shootout with police hours after they carried out their precision assault. The possible motive for the attack included workplace violence or terrorism. The European Space Agency launched a rocket carrying two cubes of gold and platinum almost a million miles from Earth so scientists can see how they will behave in a free fall at a cost of more than 450 million US dollars. What may sound like a frivolous enterprise is actually the prelude to a far more ambitious mission that hopes to measure ripples in space-time caused by black holes and other massive objects lurking unseen in dark corners of the galaxy. Also known as gravi gravitational waves, these ripples were predicted by Albert Einstein a century ago, but have never been directly detected. In order for that mission tentatively scheduled for launch in 2034 to succeed, the European Space Agency first had to test whether it can shield objects from external influences well enough to measure the minute effects of the gravitational waves. Saudi Arabia appears to have floated the idea of a global deal to balance oil markets as well as lift prices from around the low, lowest levels in six years. Although fellow producers Iran and Russia rejected its main idea of cutting output. Saudi Arabia, the largest oil producer in the organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC, might propose members cut oil output by one million barrels per day next year if non-OPEC countries joined in. Saudi Arabia has long, has long insisted it would cut production only if fellow OPEC members and non-OPEC countries joined in. The report quoted a senior OPEC delegate as saying the Saudis would agree to cuts if Iraq freezes production rises and Iran and non-members such as Russia, Mexico, Oman and Kazakhstan contribute. Any cooperation between OPEC and non-OPEC producers to tackle low oil prices would be the first since they joined forces 15 years ago to help the market recover from the 1998 financial crisis. There are challenges and expectations facing the COP21 climate talks in Paris. Here's the report. World leaders are trying to show off their green credentials, from the U.S. president's trip to Alaska to Francois Hollande's visit to Iceland. Glaciers are melting at an alarming rate, this one reducing by 50 meters a year. All of these people have come to see the effects of global warming, but we're not trying to promote a kind of global warming tourism. We cannot become willing spectators of our own demise. Climate change is affecting us all. Sea levels have risen by 20 centimetres since 1900, and there's an increase in droughts, heat waves and cyclones. The average global temperature has risen by one degree since the pre-industrial era, and this is mainly down to humans. Limiting warming to two degrees or even less is the number one priority of the Paris COP21 conference. That needs a reduction of 40 to 70 percent of greenhouse gases by 2050, and a major change of habits. 
Fossil fuels, the main emitters, still account for 80% of world energy production. There is a good news part of this story because even as the pollution has continued to mount up, the technologists and business leaders have brought down the cost of electricity from renewable sources to the point where now it's cheaper than electricity from burning fossil fuels in the majority of countries now. China and the United States are the top two polluters on the planet. They say they're determined to succeed in Paris, where they failed in Copenhagen in 2009. Nearly 150 heads of state and government are at the conference, so reaching a deal won't be easy. But ensuring concrete action afterwards promises to be harder still. Now for the general weather forecast. Clear to partially cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas overlooking Sea of Oman, while the rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies. On the governorates of Wusta and Dofar, there will be chances of low clouds and fog during late night and early morning. Winds will be easterly to northeasterly light to moderate on most of the governorates of the Sultanate. Seas along the southeastern coast will be moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 meters and along the rest of the coast it will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The International Governmental Committee for Non-Materialistic Cultural Heritage of UNESCO enlists Hamasia Rasfa art within the list of non-materialistic cultural heritage. The Sultanate marks World Day for the Disabled while focusing on technology of benefit to integrate the disabled in the society. And President Putin vows Turkey's leadership would be made to regret the downing of the Russian warplane as Moscow announces a halt in talks on a major gas pipeline project. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.